When we talk about various things that happen in astronomy, there are a variety of terms that come from the world of physics that are going to be important to understand. And so this tutorial is going to cover some of this terminology. So our first term that we're going to see a lot of is mass. And as it says here, mass is related to weight, but they are not the same. Because weight is related to the force of gravity. And so if you took your bathroom scale with you and traveled to the moon, on the moon you would weigh one-sixth of what you do here on Earth. So if you weighed 180 pounds on Earth, you would weigh 30 pounds on the moon. So your weight is dependent upon where you are. Mass is not dependent on the force of gravity. So your mass is not going to change if you travel to the moon. You're going to have the same amount of mass. And we measure mass in kilograms. That's going to be the metric unit that you will see for mass. So however many kilograms of mass you have here on Earth, you're going to have that same amount of mass when you travel to the moon, even though you weigh less. And even out in the middle of space, where you are weightless, you would still have mass. The next term that we will see periodically is volume. And so volume is related to size. And we can think of volume as how much space is taken up. So if you have a large object, then it's going to take up a lot of space. It will have a large volume. Now the simplest volume is what's shown here with a cube, where you would have your length and width and height, and just multiply those three numbers, and you would get the volume. So density is going to be a combination of mass and volume because this is going to tell us basically how much mass is in a volume or how packed is that material. So in our top image, we've got each little red dot represents a unit of mass and there are a lot of dots in that little box. So because it is more closely packed, that is considered a high density. In the lower box, where there are fewer units of mass, it's more spread out, that is a low density. Where density is going to come into play is when we are looking to determine the composition of an object because every known material has a known density. So for example, iron has a very specific density. So if we know the density of something that we're looking at, we can compare that to what we know are the densities of other materials and figure out its composition. That's how we're going to figure out things like what is the interior of a planet? Is it iron in the interior or is it hydrogen? That's going to be based upon the density. So a variant on a popular riddle that kids like to ask, 
Uh, which has more mass, a kilogram of feathers or a kilogram of lead? Well, they're both one kilogram. So they are equal. But what will be different is the volume. You're going to have a large volume of feathers because it takes a lot of feathers to add up to one kilogram whereas the lead is going to have a small volume. Lead has a very high density so it doesn't take very much lead to get a kilogram. Feathers have a very low density so it takes a lot of feathers before you get a full kilogram. Angular momentum as it says here, it's the balance between size and spin rate. And there's a reason why there's a picture of ice skaters. When an ice skater is spinning and their arms are outstretched, I'm trying very long arms here, then they spin very slow. When they pull their arms in, they spin a lot faster. That is conservation of angular momentum. So when the size goes down by pulling in their arms, the spin rate will go up. They'll spin faster. And we're going to see this effect come into play in a couple places. One, as planets orbit the Sun, their distance from the Sun changes, and that's going to change the orbit rate. And we'll also see this when we talk about the formation of the solar system and what happens as a cloud of gas uh, that is spinning collapses down. So conservation of angular momentum will crop up. The next three terms um, are often confused with each other, so we want to distinguish what each one means. So speed by itself is just how fast is an object moving. So you know, in your car you have a speedometer. It's telling you how fast you're driving and that's all it tells you. It's not telling you anything else. Uh, I think there's two E's in there. But uh, that's all that speed is. How fast are you moving? And so in the picture here, if you move slow, uh, you're not going to travel very far in 10 seconds. If you move fast, you're going to travel much farther in 10 seconds. So the faster you go, the bigger the distance you cover in the same amount of time. What distinguishes velocity from speed is that velocity also includes the direction of motion. So in the illustration here, speed, it doesn't care which way you're going. If no matter which way you're going, if you're going two meters per second, it's two meters per second. But velocity does care about which direction you're going. So the general convention is to the right is positive and to the left is negative. So two meters per second to the left is typically considered negative two meters per second. To the right would be considered a positive two meters per second. So this would be like if your speedometer when you're in reverse showed a negative speed. Uh, then that would then be really a velocitometer. Um, I guess that would be the right word. And uh, it would be telling you both which direction you're headed and how fast you're going. And then our last term that also gets confused with speed and velocity is acceleration. And so acceleration is a change in velocity but it's velocity, so direction matters.
So in the picture here, if your velocity stays the same, not only does it stay the same size, that is the same speed, but also the same direction, then you are not accelerating. Acceleration is zero. If you are traveling in the positive direction and you're getting faster and faster and faster, then that is a positive acceleration. If you're traveling in the positive direction and getting slower, that is a negative acceleration. Uh, everyday language, we typically think of the word deceleration. In physics, we just use uh, either positive or negative acceleration. But then there's also this picture of a circle. Our speed is staying the same, but the direction is changing. That is also an acceleration. Changing direction is a change in velocity. So in general, if you change your speed or direction, then you are accelerating, which doesn't uh, necessarily match our intuitive feel for that, but it is true. Not just are you speeding up or slowing down, but also are you changing direction, then yes, you are accelerating.